come down to Epic Bible Adventures. And what's amazing about Epic Bible Adventures is you don't just hear the story, you get to experience the story. We went back in time, and we met all these biblical characters, and they helped us learn how all about standing strong. Now, on the first day, remember we met a shepherd. What was his name? David. And David was a lowly shepherd, but he became a mighty king. And he taught us that God's love helps us. And then we met a queen, and she was in a scary situation. What was the queen's name? Esther. Esther. Right. Remember Esther? She had to save her people, and she was able to save her people. And we learned that friends and family help us. And then we met a man, and he worked for the king. He had, he had, oh, hold on, hold on. My goodness. Who are those kids so antsy? Oh. Remember he had that job where he had to taste the king's drinks, make sure they weren't poisoned? And then he went and he had, wanted to go and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. What was his name? Nehemiah. Awesome. And we learned all about how Nehemiah, he would pray to God about everything and how prayer helps us. And then we learned about Jesus and how he paid the price for the forgiveness of our sins. And how did Jesus pay the price for our sins? Exactly. He died on the cross, but he rose again. And if we believe in him, if we trust in him, our sins can be forgiven and we can have eternal life. And we learned about how we, trusting God helps us. So today is our last epic Bible adventure, and we're going to meet one more character, and we're going to learn about how the Bible helps us. But before we begin, I have a question for you kids. Who here is eight years old? Do we have anyone who's eight years old or maybe going to turn eight this year? Eight years old. Okay, we got lots of eight-year-olds. Now, let me ask you this. What would you think if you were made king at eight years old? If you became king right now, you were made king of Canada. What would the first law, what would be the first law that you would make if you were made king of Canada at eight years old? What law would you make? Cookies for dinner. Okay. What else? What else would you make? The first law. Ice cream for breakfast. Okay. Okay, sausages for every meal. A lot of food things. Okay. I don't know if your parents aren't feeding your kids or something. Listen to God. Oh, that's a good law. Oreos for lunch. Okay, I think we got I think we got ice cream, Oreos. And cookies. Okay, that's a good healthy day's lunch. What about no more homework? Would we like that one? No bedtimes? One more. What's one more law that you would make? Ooh, dinner for every meal. I like dinner. That's a good one. Free food. Okay, a lot of food. All right, the kids like the food. If you were eight years old. Now, that's a little silly, right? It seems silly to be made king at eight years old. Aren't kings older and wiser? That would never happen, right? No, but actually it did. Our Bible story today is about a boy who became king when he was eight years old, and we know it's true because it comes from the Bible. Now, this king was named King Josiah, and he began to rule in Jerusalem when he was eight years old. Now, jo Josiah had come from a long line of bad kings. Even his father had been a bad king, so bad that, that his own people had kicked him out and made him no longer king. We all know how that really went. But Josiah, even though he was young, he wanted to be a good king. He wanted to follow God. He wanted to know to do what was right, but he didn't quite know what right was. He, you know, he hadn't had any good examples. He, he wanted to be like a King David, who was this great king, but he was struggling with how to do this. And he decided, you know what, maybe the first thing I should do is rebuild the temple. You see, the temple where God's people would meet and worship God, 
It had fallen into decay and ruin. And so they began to rebuild the temple. They went through the rubble, and as they were kind of clearing away the rubble, they found something. They found a scroll. And they unrolled the scroll, and they realized that the scroll was God's word. And so they immediately brought this to King Josiah, and he looked at it, and he read it. And you know what his reaction was? He became upset. He began to cry and weep, and he actually tore his clothes. That's how upset he was. You see, he realized that he, they hadn't been following God's rules. That everything that God told them to do, they had not been doing. And so he gathered all the people together, young and old, kind of like all of us here in this theater. From babies all the way up to grandparents. He gathered the people together. And he read the scroll to them. And then King Josiah pledged. He said, I'm going to follow God's laws. Will you follow them too? And all the people agreed. They agreed to follow God's rules, God's words that very day. And so one of the first things that Josiah did was he wanted to get rid of all these idols to fake gods. You see, the people, they had these idols and they would be made of stone. And they would come and they would worship them instead of worshiping the one true God. And so he needed to get rid of them. They were all over the kingdom and Jerusalem and he needed to get rid of them so that the people would only worship God. They were depending on these idols, these fake gods, instead of depending and trusting in God. Now, I need a couple volunteers to help me with this. Couple volunteers. Okay. All right. Yeah, come on down. And we're going to pick one more. One more. Yeah. Yep. Come on down. Come right to the front. So let's just pretend that this red cup is an idol, okay? We're just going to pretend that these red cups are idols, okay? And hold on. So Josiah, he told his, his officials, go around, and I want you to destroy the idols. I want you to smash them, okay? So when I give the signal, when we all give the signal, here's what we're going to do. When I give the signal, we're going to yell, smash them, and I want you guys to step on them and smash the idols. Can you do that? Can you do that? All right, ready? When, when I count down, we're going to yell, smash them, and then they're going to smash the idols. One, two, three. <laughs> One more, yeah. Get them rid of them. Oh, come on. Get rid of that idol. All right, awesome. Thank you, guys. Give them a hand. You guys can go sit back down. So they went all through the kingdom, and following God's word, they smashed these idols they got rid of them. Now, back in Josiah's time, idols were made of stone. But you know what? We still have idols today. And they may not be made of stone, but really they're just as bad. You see, an idol is anything that's more important to you than God. Anything that you seek to give you what only God can give you. Anything that you give all your attention to and then pulls you away from God. And idols, they can be good things, but they're good things that we turn into a God thing. They're good things that we turn into an ultimate thing. And so kids, idols, it can be, maybe you want to be really popular. You want everyone to like you. Or an idol could be, I want that newest video game, or I want some more toys, or I, I, TV can even be an idol. Or sports. It can be good things in your life that begin to take all your attention and pull you away from God. And even for us adults, we have idols in our life. And idols can be success and, or money. It can be stuff. I need a nicer car, a bigger house, better clothes, that newest gadget for your hobby. Work or how we look or what people think of us. Even good things like marriage and family can become an idol to us. And idols are those things that we say, if I had this, if only I could have this, then I would be happy. Then I'd be content and fulfilled and have a purpose. It's those things that you believe you can't live without. We're really good at making idols in our lives. But let me ask you, what do you think happens when we depend on our idols? When we try to build our lives on idols. 
I'm going to call down Ben. He's going to give me a hand. I have a little experiment to show us how, what happens when we try to depend on idols. So here we have idols, and imagine that the balloons are your life, and you're trying to depend on your idols. Maybe you're, you've tied your life to your idols. What do you think happens when we try to stand strong when we depend on idols? What do you think is going to happen in the storms of life when we try to stand strong, but we're depending on idols? You think they're going to blow away, or do you think we can stand strong? Well, let's find out. We didn't really stand strong. We blew away. We weren't able to stand strong in the storms of life. And this is what happens when we try to depend on idols. We can't str stand strong. When we look to our idols to give us answers or bring us peace or life or joy, our idols are going to fail us. They'll never satisfy us. They don't bring us what we seek. They're going to crumble. They're going to blow away. They're not going to last because they're weak. They will not help us stand strong. But the Bible helps us. Right? The Bible is God's word to us. It's how God speaks to us. Remember our verse we learned this morning? Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light to my path. God's word, it shows us how he wants us to live. He shows us the way we're supposed to, to, to act and, and treat other people. And, and it's this guide for our life this instruction manual to help us live how God would have us live so that we can stand strong. Think about this last week. Every story we learned came from the Bible. Think about everything it taught us. We learned about King David and how much God loves us. We learned about Queen Esther and how God used her to save his people. We learned about Nehemiah and how we can pray to God about anything and he's listening to us. And we learned about how Jesus died for our sins. And if we believe in him, our sins can be forgiven and we can have eternal life. We can have life with God forever. The Bible tells us everything that we need to know to stand strong and live for him. So what are you going to depend on? What are you going to trust? Are you going to depend on idols or are you going to depend on God? You can always depend on God and his word. When life is hard... When you need help, when you have questions, when you need encouragement, you can always turn to the Bible and God will speak to you and give you what you need. The Bible is a strong foundation for life. It doesn't crumble, it doesn't blow away, it doesn't fail us. The Bible helps us. So I have one more experiment to show you how the Bible helps us stand strong. So before we were tied to those idols, but here we have God's word, we have the Bible. And what happens, you think happens when we tie our life to him, when we depend on God's word? What do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to blow? Who thinks it's going to blow away? Oh, okay. Let's find out. Maybe I get a little closer. Oh. It didn't blow away. Because... Well, yes, yes, that's why it works. Thank you, Chelsea. <laughs> but it illustrates this fact that when we trust in God's word, when we live our lives on that foundation, we, will, we can depend on it. We're not going to blow away. We are able to stand strong. I want to read you a Bible verse. This is Jesus speaking about his word. It says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does them, and does not do them, sorry, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. 
Two houses, one built on sand. Have you ever built a sand castle? Yeah. Do they last? No. No, they don't. But ha- imagine a house built on a solid rock. Do you think that's going to last? Yeah. So let me ask you kids, everyone, eyes here. This is the most important part. Let me ask you adults, eyes here. This is the most important part. What are you building your life on? Are you going to build it on idols? Or are you building it on God and his truth, his word, the Bible? Yes. Are you going to build it on rock or on sand? Only one can help you stand strong. Build your life on the Bible. Remember King Josiah, when he heard those words, God's words, he obeyed them. He allowed them to shape his life, how he was going to think and act and live. Allow the Bible to shape you. Read it. Everyone, read your Bible. Obey your Bible. Follow what it says. Allow it to begin to shape who you become. You can always go to God's word. It is always true and it will always help you. Build your life on the Bible. Because the Bible helps us. Awesome. I'm going to pray for all of us here. And then we're going to sing one more song. And I think we have a special treat at the very end, okay? Maybe one of the kids were, was king and they made this a new law. We'll find out. Let, okay, everyone, eyes here. Close your eyes. We're going to pray. Dear God, we thank you for just an amazing week at day camp. We thank you for all the fun we had, all the, the games we played, all the crafts we did, all the great food we ate. But mostly we thank you that we got to learn about you. We thank you that you love us, that you sent Jesus to die for us, that our sins can be forgiven and we can have a relationship with you. We can be friends with you, God. And we thank you that you've given us your word, the Bible, and that the Bible helps us stand strong, that we can, it is a strong foundation for our life and that we can trust it. And when we obey it, when we follow it, it will help us to whatever we're going through, good times and bad times. When we have questions, when we need hope, when we need encouragement, your word is always strong and will always help us. Help us to read it. Help us to obey it help, it. help us to allow it to shape our lives. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that you love every single one of us here. That you know who we are. And that you love us. Help us to always remember that you love us. In Jesus' name, amen.